Want to speak real Swahili from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at SwahiliPod101.com. In this lesson, we we'll learn some of the most common greetings used in Kenya. Ukotayari, are you ready? Tuanze, so let's get started. The most commonly used informal greeting is habari. Habari. Habari means hi or hello. We use it when we meet people. We can use this greeting with friends or relatives, but also with people we don't know. We used this phrase in lesson one. Do you remember? And do you remember what the formal way of greeting people is? Shikamo. Shikamo. Do you also remember that habari can be used both in formal and casual settings? During the evening, we say, Habari ya jioni. Habari ya jioni. Jioni is Swahili for evening. So, habari ya jioni means good evening. Habari and habari ya jioni are used when we meet someone, but when we leave, we don't say these greetings again. Instead, when living in both formal and informal situations, Kenyan people say, Kwaheri. Kwaheri. Kwaheri means goodbye. Finally, in Swahili, we have an expression meaning see you soon that can be considered both formal and informal. Tuonane tena. Tuonane tena. Now you can greet people in many different ways in Swahili. Let's review them all again. When greeting someone in an informal way, remember to say habari. When greeting someone in a formal situation, you say shikamo. When living in either a formal or informal situation, say tuonane tena. It's easy, isn't it? Now, it's time for Medina's insights. In formal situations, Kenyans commonly greet each other by shaking hands. But if we meet someone we are very friendly with, we hug each other. Don't be afraid to do it with your Kenyan friends. It's normal. And in this first lesson, you're going to learn how to introduce yourself in Swahili. You learn both an informal and formal way to do it. But unlike many other languages, there is not a very big difference between informal and formal speech in Swahili. First, let's see how Kenyan people introduce themselves in an informal situation. Habari, mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Hi, I'm Medina. Nice to meet you. Ha ba ri. Mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Let's break it down. Start with the greeting. Habari. Then, mimi ni, which is followed by your name. Next, say the phrase, Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. All together, it is habari mimi ni Medina nina furaha kukutana na wewe and now let's see the same sentence in formal speech shikamo jina langu ni Medina Maraka nina furaha kukutana na wewe hello my name is Medina Maraka nice to meet you shikamo jina langu ni Medina Maraka nina furaha Kukutana na wewe. So, what has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a closer look at these together. It's important to note that habari can be used in both casual and formal settings. However, it is more formal and respectful to use the word shikamo, especially when addressing an older person. Shikamo implies good day or simply hello. You will notice that the section mimi ni for I am changes to jina langu ni Medina for my name is Medina. During a formal self introduction, it is advisable to mention your last name. So, I will say my name is Medina Maraka. Here, you'll say your full name. Finally, nina furaha kukutana na wewe is the same for both. This phrase means nice to meet you. One more time, the informal way to introduce yourself in Swahili is Habari, mimi ni Medina, nina furaha 
kukutana na wewe. And the formal way to introduce yourself is shikamo. Jina langu ni Medina Maraka. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. When introducing yourself, it's a good habit to shake hands. Usually, the right hand is slightly supported by the left hand. If you're concerned about politeness, a slight bend forward while shaking the hand adds a sign of respect in the Kenyan business world. However, if you speak too formally, people will think you sound unnatural. In Kenya, simplicity is best. Want to get cheat sheets, audiobooks, lessons, apps, and much more every month for free? Just click the link in the description to get your free language gifts of the month. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use good manners when we thank people. Are you ready? Let's get started. There are several ways to thank someone, but let's start with the easiest. It's just one word. Asante. Asante. As you may have guessed, asante means thank you. When saying thank you very much, you just need to add the word sana. Asante sana. Asante sana. Sana means a lot. So, asante sana is just like saying thank you very much. In the last lesson, we talked about the informal and formal ways of speaking Swahili. But asante will work in both situations, so there's no need to worry. So how do you reply to thank you in Swahili? It's easy. There are two ways of doing it. The main way is to say, karibu. This means, you're welcome. Karibu. Literally, this phrase means, welcome. The other way to say you're welcome is the expression, kamwe. Kamwe. Literally, this phrase means not at all or never mind. You use this when you think that there's no need to be thanked. So it's like saying, don't mention it. So when someone says asante to you, you can simply reply with karibu or kamwe. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. If you're not sure about whether to use asante or asante sana, keeping it simple is always your safest bet. You don't have to worry about formal or informal situations. Asante can be used with just about anyone, anywhere, and at any time. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamme na mwanamke wanaongea. Mwanamme ana miaka mingapi sasa? Sikuku yako ya kuzaliwa ni hivi karibuni sana. Ndiyo, ni siku baada ya kesho. Unenda kuwa na miaka ngapi? Nageuka miaka sitini. Hongera, wacha tushereke. Asante sana, na shukuru sana. Mwanamme ana miaka mingapi sasa? Mwanamme na mwanamke wanaongea. Mwanamme ana miaka mingapi sasa? Sikuku yako ya kuzaliwa ni hivi karibuni sana. Ndiyo, ni siku baada ya kesho. Unenda kuwa na miaka ngapi? Nageuka miaka sitini. Hongera, wacha tushereke. Asante sana, na shukuru sana. First you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamme na mwanamke wanaongea. Nani anaishi na mwanamme? Mbona usikuje kwa nyumba yangu wakati mwingine hivi karibuni? Asante. Lakini nahisi kuogopa kidogo. Ningelipenda kujua familia yako kabla sijakutana nao. Sawa. Babangu ni mfanyikazi wa ofisi na kozi yake ni kuvua. Mamangu ni mkazi wa nyumba na anajua kupika. Una ndugu au dada wowote? Ndio, nina dada mkubwa na ndugu mdogo. Dadangu ameoleka na anaishi Ulaya. Ndugu yangu ni mwanafunzi katika shule ya upili. Una familia nzuri? 
ningelipenda kukutana na kuongea nao. Nani anaishi na mwanamme? Mwanamme na mwanamke wanaongea. Nani anaishi na mwanamme? Mbona usikuje kwa nyumba yangu wakati mwingine hivi karibuni? Asante. Lakini nahisi kuogopa kidogo. Ningelipenda kujua familia yako kabla sijakutana nao. Sawa. Babangu ni mfanyikazi wa ofisi na kozi yake ni kuvua. Mamangu ni mkazi wa nyumba na anajua kupika. Una ndugu au dada wowote? Ndio, nina dada mkubwa na ndugu mdogo. Dadangu ameoleka na anaishi Ulaya. Ndugu yangu ni mwanafunzi katika shule ya upili. Una familia nzuri. Ningelipenda kukutana na kuongea nao. When learning a new language, it's easy to think, I don't think I'm making any progress. What if I never reach my goals? We all get these thoughts from time to time. But are they worth being scared of? What are the fears language learners tend to have the most? And how can you learn to overcome them? Here are the top four language learning fears, according to our users. Number one, I'm not good enough to start speaking yet. This is a pretty common fear or misconception that most learners have. Here's how you overcome it. The best way to get good at speaking is to start speaking from day one. You need to open your mouth and just start talking. If you think you're not good enough, just focus on the lines you want to say. Number two, I'm afraid I'll never be fluent. You've got to set small, specific goals. Make daily goals, like having just a five minute conversation. As these small goals add up, you'll be speaking more comfortably. Number three, I'm not making any progress. There are two things you can do right now. Use the dashboard to track your progress. Our dashboard shows how much you've accomplished. Or try a harder lesson on our website. The lessons come with line-by-line -line translations and the hosts explain everything. Now you can understand something you didn't minutes ago. Number four, I'm afraid of not understanding anything I hear. This fear can occur when you hear advanced grammar and vocabulary and it just goes completely over your head. To beat this, simply read along with our line-by-line -line tool. It's the best way to instantly understand advanced conversations. Translations and scripts are right in front of you. For real life situations, learn useful phrases such as, can you say it more slowly? I don't understand. There's nothing wrong with saying that you didn't understand something. So these are the top four fears and how to overcome them. Luckily, we also have the perfect tools available to help you conquer your fears. Sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Don't let your fears stop you. Start learning now.